Congratulations to you with sad regrets I'm tired of the old shit that the new Charles. Good evening, Nick, or, or good morning, rather. Yes, sir. Um, I'm joining the same set of dots as you, but I'm not making the same answer. Uh, the point of view that I'm coming from, I live in Huddersfield, not known for its wealth. I'm a university lecturer. I do send my children to private school. Um, but I am aware that I pay general taxation. And my general taxation pays for a space for them to be a, uh, a school in the public system. Yes. So I have, I am willingly paying tax. I am, I am open to a place in the state system, which I am not taking up. So technically, by not taking up that space at the state system, mm. I am freeing up money in the state system to be spent on the children who are in the state system. So, so you, are, you are, in fact, to... paying twice? Well, yes. You could call it paying twice. Um, I just see it as a choice that I want to do, because as a university lecturer, I am extremely aware of the dumbing down um, that's happened with people coming into university. I would adore to have more state-educated state children at university, not for the numbers, but I want their information bar level rate. Right, so would it, would it be possible then to have both systems operate um, to the uppermost degree? We could have a private school system that does not intersect with the public school system. Um, you get very complicated, uh, this issue in this country. It would uh, get extremely complicated. Well, pub uh, only by dint of the word that public school is private school. Uh, it's not public, it's private, it's just very weird. But anyway, fee-paying schools should uh, exist but in a separate system to... Um, to... Uh, gov <laughs> to... I'm trying to think of another word, the public. What is it? It's, um, you're, what you're suggesting state is a very bureaucratic method to try and uh, make an equitable status between the two. Right. Well, why shouldn't I? Am, I. I mean, why should why should why, why shouldn't state I, schools be as good as private schools? And, and the reason no is reason money. At all. The, the uh, money, isn't it? What, yeah. It, m what my money does is it buys a relatively smaller class size. Yes. And that means greater attention to detail. Uh, but I am willingly giving the money that I am putting into the public taxation for state schools and not using it. So right. I well, you're not, you're not I, willingly giving it. They're taking it from you, whether you like it or not. Uh, I, I happily pay my tax. Right. <laughs> well, who doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. No, but I but, but do there, is a, there is a point over and above this, though, that um, yes. it does um, it, it does cement in place the iniquity in the system in that if someone goes to a private school, they already have or, or they have already got an advantage on those that don't. And then the school itself gives them another advantage. And then having been to that school, gives them an advantage. So wealth stays with the wealthy and the poor will forever be poor. But the poor are not subsidizing private schools, which was the the thing that irritated me but of what you said. But they before. are though. I believe okay, if you want to say the poor are subsidizing private schools, I will argue back that the private school um, donors are funding the state schools to more money. It depends. Than... It depends. It very much depends. If you are one of the international super rich, then you will no doubt have employed an entire build, a shiny building of accountants to make sure that you pay as little as possible or zero tax. That's how that works. The other side of it is, if you are from abroad and you send your yeah. child to a British private school, which is uh, yeah. not not an uncommon thing, then you've paid no tax here. Um, you do make a point. I know I'm a university lecturer. I know I get paid £38,000 a year. 
I don't really fall into either category. I know that at the school my children are at, um, there are a lot of other teachers' children who are at that school because they want to try and give their... We are willing to pay money for our kids to get that one step up because although we work in the state system and I work at a, a, a state university, I, I want to try and gain what you would term an, an unfair advantage for my child it, and that's it, it, something i'm quite willing to do it's another advantage it's not it, it's not just the advantage of the yeah. education that that school um would offer it's also having been to that school will give you an advantage and and the advantage increases as the amount that you spend on that education increases right to the very top where you've got eaton and harrow which want £40,000 a year, something of that order, and the result is that you have essentially won the lottery of life before you've even done your A-levels. That is feasible. Um, also, the inverse can can happen. I've got to say that I don't know anyone who goes to Eton or Harrow. Um, I do bump into a fair amount of public schools because I am also a voluntary swimming judge. And I, uh, I judge at various school galas, private school galas. And, uh, yeah, I don't think I've ever bumped in, into anyone from... No, but you, you, you know a lot of people who have, and they're the ones that are stuffing the front bench of the Conservative Party. St Albans, Jerry. Hi. Hello, Jerry. Yeah. Right, OK, I've got a, such a big long list. O of, of what? <laughs> of all the questions I need to ask. Right. But I need your kind of advice. A, right. lo a long yes. list. How many questions is on the, are on this list? Oh, uh, let's have a look. I, I've got to six. Six? Yeah. Can I have your best three? Best three. Oh, I don't know. Right, okay. So. Ooh, are these okay. yes or no answers? Uh, kind of. Okay, well, yeah. we might be, have time for four. Go All ahead. Right. Okay, let's go with number one. I love the wacky racer, yeah. Right when you when you said that, and and Boris is the one that's the dog in the uh, airplane, just laughing. <laughs> He's muttly. <laughs> <laughs> he right. is. He is just laughing. Yeah. M muttly, right? Muttly, yeah. Okay. And then the thing is, right? I want to know what does Boris actually do wrong? But take away the the fact of the parties. Um, and kind of like not politics, mm. but everything else. So, did he actually achieve what he wanted to achieve by by being a PM? He gets uh, the personal stuff and all the. Did he did he achieve is, what he actually, wanted to achieve? Well, he he got the top job. That's what he wanted to achieve. Yes. So if that's he, what you mean, he always wanted that. He yeah. did always want that. Did he fulfill everything that he wanted to do? Which was well, I don't know. You you tell you tell me what it was that he wanted to do. You, you know what? I don't other think than anybody else, other than okay. get yeah. Brexit done, which he didn't do. No, but he was the closest one, and I don't think anyone else would have done any better. Oh, Jerry. Oh, come on, really? Look what happened to Theresa May. You know, and Liz. We'll just end up in the same way. Come on, really? Do you think anybody... All right, then you tell me who would have got it sorted out then. He has not got it sorted out. Brexit is not done. Brexit is a Gordian knot of uh, of uh, confusion and misery that has not been sorted out one iota. This great deal that he promised that he uh, d uh, d uh, negotiated, him and that melting candle, David Frost, it's, uh, it was, first, the best deal that anybody had ever heard of, in a sort of Trumpian way, and second, it was the worst deal that anybody's ever signed. He, d he, he achieved nothing and yeah. lied his face off while he was doing it. I mean, here's a, a brief rundown of, of just a few of his lies. We're recruiting 50,000 new nurses. That was a lie. We've delivered the biggest reduction in tax for a quarter of a century. Not true. We couldn't have rolled out the vaccines if we were still part of the European Union. That lie just kept repeating over and over again. We've taken more people fleeing conflict since 2015. Untrue. The evidence of Brexit causing trade drops is few and far between. Well, that couldn't be less true. 
We cut crime by 14%. How many times did you hear him say that? It was the opposite. Crime went up by 14%. We got all the big calls right. Holy smoke. He's got to be kidding me. We have 420,000 more people in employment than before the pandemic. He keeps saying that over and over again, despite people, people in his own government writing to him to tell him to stop saying it because it's not true. We got the fastest growing economy in the G7, also untrue. I followed the ministerial guidelines at all times. Foreign office uh, staff cuts are fake news. There was no alcohol on the table in the number 10 uh, Christmas quiz. The food and drink export market is growing. Growing. We increased the living wage by a record amount. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Your position is that he's, that Lee the Maloney's doing his best? But who are we going to end up with now? Penny Morden, in all probability. Or Rishi Sunak. Or it could be um, a, a surprise runner might come from the back and uh, shock us all. Who knows? Which one of these would you trust with the nuclear code? <laughs> Sweller Braverman, Liz Trust. God, it's painful. Uh, Leeds. Hello, Tom. Hi. Um, going back to the point on who's going to lead us, yeah. who's going to lead us, I can't see anybody to pick from these contestants. Mm -hmm. um, we voted for Boris. Um, he got a majority. I think what's happening with the Tory party is they've got the majority. They don't think that Boris... He's sitting there wavelength and that they want to change things and this is their way to do it. And it gives them two years to get a good standing with, say, Rishi or Penny to win the next general election right. against somebody like Keir Starmer. Well, they need two That's years. How... They need probably need two years or a year and a half out, uh, at least. We had COVID. We had get COVID, their, didn't get we? their ducks in a row. Everybody had COVID. Yeah, yeah they did. And, you know... I'll be honest, I think Boris did a good job through that. I don't oh, think Labour God. would have given us... Almost 200,000 no, no. dead people, are you kidding me? 200, right. We've got a better vaccination record than most of Europe. We got, what yeah. do you mean? No, we don't. We, a better vaccination record. We don't. That lie, that, that, there's another one that they keep uh, saying over and over again. We couldn't have uh, conducted the vaccine rollout if we'd still been part of the European who, Union. You, you surely don't believe that, Tom. Who, who, who was the best in Europe, then? What do you mean, best? So, which country within Europe was the best at vaccination records? Define best. So, in a percentage of people, say, how many, one in ten, which country is the best in vaccinations? Do you mean which country vaccinated the most of their population? They're all about the same. Yeah, we, we, within a ratio. With, I don't know what that means. We had some of the worst lockdowns of any country in the world. One of the strictest lockdowns with all the consequences that followed from that for our economy and people's health, people's mental health, the businesses that were ruined and so on and so on. We'll never get that time back again that we were locked indoors. Well, by the way, they were having a great time partying and sending people out with uh, empty suitcases to fill up with booze. So we had some of the strictest lockdowns in the world and some of the worst death rates in the world. And yet people are still saying, essentially, to sum it up, leave him alone, he's doing his best. Oh my God, and, and calling him Boris. He's not a pet. This is painful. Um, Streatham, hello, Alex. Hi, Alex. Uh, hello, Nick. I just would like to say I have a different view I think um, it's not the way uh, Boris is not such a bad man. He's done a lot of good for the country. And I think it's utterly wrong what the media puts him like, makes hatred towards him. Can you give us every, some examples of the good that he has so done? Every, every politician lies. Every, is a, well, I'm not, every, sure, I'm not sure that's true. I mean, it's, history, you, could say that every, every, well, you could say that every human being lies. But can you give us some yeah, examples of the good that he has done? Well, he's done a lot of good. I mean, he's been he's been through COVID. He's he's, well, um, he's we all done, we all uh, went we all he, went through COVID. To, 
he's done the best rollout of. Uh, I mean, he's done lots of good in, for the country. Well, can you give us some and, examples? Um, we had COVID. He's been. Yeah, he's but been we all had COVID. He, That's no, not no, really an achievement. Running, just, he's been, he's been, it's an invisible he's disease been, that you catch. He's made it for the country as best as he could do it. He, and he, uh, he's and doing country, his best. When, is is that the, the level country, of his achievement? Well, I'm not talking. I'm saying for us, the country, he done the best. Yeah, can, can you give us some well. examples? He wasn't as harsh as other countries. He was very good. He tried his best. I know Boris person personally. I've seen, see, and I think he's a good guy. And do you he, think that? Whatever, he, do you think that he has been doing his best? I think he's done his absolute best. Well, yes. then I think we're all in big trouble. Uh, thanks, Alex. I, I won't ask you another time to give us an example of. of the good that he has done to the country because you know you can only ask the same question so many times uh let's have wandsworth hello nick hi nick how are you doing good thanks excellent i wonder if you could help me actually give some advice some parental advice um i've, I've got an eight-year-old boy um who is um, who was actually quite shy as a kid, as a four or five year old, and um, I thought, well, how, how do I get how do I get his character out? I want him to be a bit more extrovert. So I introduced him uh, to to my woe uh, to Bob Carroll G's and Spit the Dog, oh, yeah. and also to Rod Hull and Emu. But and it's brought him out of his character exponentially, and he's one of the most he's one of the most popular kids in school. But what the reason why I called why, was... Why is it that I don't believe a word you're saying? But go on, let's see if the next bit's <laughs> believable. No, it's, no, it's totally believable. Okay, how, how, did you I'll, introduce, I'll how did you introduce him to Bob Carroll, geez? He surely hasn't been on TV since uh, no, Tis well, was. No, no, I haven't introduced him physically. I mean, like, by YouTube videos. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, Tis yeah, was is YouTube, still on yeah. YouTube, is it? I guess it probably is. Yeah, he is. Yeah, okay. he is, yeah. I thought well, it's just a way of getting his character out, and like to him talking to this dog and, and Rod Hull and Emu. Right. Anyway, St still he, not he, believing it, but go on. <laughs> <laughs> I'll forge your emails on via your email. All right, then. Email. that sounds like a threat, but go on. <laughs> uh, well, he uh, he's so much out of his character now that he um, he he doesn't call himself Bob Cowdy. He calls I'm, Bo I'm Boris Johnson. I'm Bodger, and he calls his dog. He doesn't call it Spit anymore. He calls it Rishi. And whenever there's a scandal, he goes, when he asks him, what do you think about this party gate, Spit? What do you think about this party gate, Rishi? And he just goes, Spit, and he goes around spitting everywhere. Right, but, still not believing it, Nick, but uh, better luck next time. What was that about? Anybody a clue? No. Not a clue. Istanbul. Hello, Bernard. Yeah, hello, uh, Nick. Uh, good evening. I'm calling actually from Holland. I was in Istanbul a week ago, but I'm now back in Holland. Oh, yes. How's Istanbul? Uh, I think it's a brilliant city. I love being there. Yeah, really great. Because it's um, <laughs> it's in that area of the map, there or thereabouts, isn't it, Istanbul? Uh, which area of the map? Well, the area of the map that is uh, top of the news. That I don't know. I mean, uh, I was trying to. I was intending to phone you a little bit about one thing they've got in Istanbul, which is called the Dolmuş, which are sort of taxis, but they're, they're minibuses, which are all over the place and for cheap amounts and they carry maybe 15, 16, 17, 18 people and they'd be brilliant in London. Well, it sounds like a bus. But, but it's, a small, it's a small mini bus, but that's not really why I phoned. I phoned about something much more heavy, to be honest, if uh -oh. I may. Uh-oh. Go on <laughs> A couple of weeks ago, you had a gentleman phone in who talked about the characterization of Johnson and of his government as fascist. Oh, yeah. And you said yourself that you checked on Google about the characteristics of fascism. Yeah, if you just look it I up. I checked it myself yeah. also. Mm -hmm. And if you like, the, re the, the government, at least certainly this gentleman uh, in the position of prime minister, ticks most of the boxes on, in that list. Yeah, I'm afraid so, so. My question is, do we talk about Johnson in a nice way, in the sense of him being a democratically elected prime minister with a large majority, or are we actually talking simply about a fascist? Um, well, see, I don't think he actually is, but I think he might have just um, sort of collapsed into uh, you know, sort of going along the road of uh, where fascism ends. I don't think he really cares that much about anything other than his own self-advancement. And um, if that does entail taking on some of the, uh, you know, the early warning signs of uh, fascism, 
then so be it. I'm sure that he isn't actually thinking in those terms. He just wants what what's right for himself at any one time. Well, that is in a way, uh, it seems to me, peculiar fascist, right. that peculiar thought about himself. I mean, it would make a difference, you see, because if you're talking about this clown, this joker, this man who gets all the attention and, the, and against the background of relative, yeah, shall I say, peaceful and uh, in a way progressive democratic situation, that's one thing. But if you're talking about, a, in a way, a sort of a, 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 a missile that's, that's launched itself with total fascist intent then you're talking about something else in the context of of a country which has a parliamentary system well you, you kind of lost me in the middle there but uh, <laughs> just leave it with me bernard and i'll uh, try to make sense of it thanks a lot mate london fields patrick hi there nick how are we how are we keeping this lovely lovely morning very well thanks so basically, my my issue is, I mean, like obviously, I was I was like speaking to your to your, to your guest earlier, and firstly, I find all the all the sort of gaffes over like Rishi's Rishi's height incredibly juvenile, and they don't actually add anything to the to the national national dialogue about the Conservative Party. Yeah, you know what? I'm I'm, I'm getting this again. Morning, morning. <laughs> I'm just going to go with my gut instinct. Maybe it's uh, my dinner is backing up on me, but I'm I'm getting a lot of gut instincts. Just right at the end of this program. I'm just going to um, say I appreciate it very much there, Patrick, but um, highly suspicious at this end. But better luck next time. Good effort. <laughs> it's like a second, uh, like a third or fifth or sixth sense. How many senses? Sixth. BJ was at war with the Tory party today over whether one of his most loyal MPs should be booted out for drunkenly groping men. Well, let's uh, tick those allegations off, uh, shall we? Boot him out for drunkenness, Bodge. Um. Uh, boot him out for groping. Um. How about getting booted out for being found having sex at work in the office with someone you're trying to give a six-figure government post to without locking the door and being caught in the act by a representative of Her Majesty's government? I, I can't comment on that. I, 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 I... The Prime Minister is trying to resist calls to remove the Conservative whip from Chris Groper after his sordid behaviour at a posh London members club, if you please. The 52-year-old Tamworth MP resigned as Deputy Chief Whip last night, admitting he had embarrassed himself and other people after drinking too much at the Elite Carlton Club in London on Wednesday. A number 10 spokesman today said that the resignation, uh, uh, the uh, PM, because uh, 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 they were drunk at the time. A little bit too much drink. Booze. So I'll translate it for you. A number 10 spokesman today suggested that with the resignation, the PM, the Prime Minister, BJ himself, considered the matter closed. <laughs> yeah, right. We'll just add that to the closed matters like Partygate. Partygate is closed. And him, him having his wallpaper and furnishings bought for him is closed. And getting a freebie holiday is closed. And trying to get someone to pay 150 grand for a blooming tree house for his toddler, if you please, is closed. And getting his dinners for free for a year is closed. And him funneling cash to a woman with a stripper pole in her flat is closed. And giving honours for cash is closed. And accepting millions from Russians with ties to Vladimir Putin is closed. And blimey, is there anything he has ever said or done that isn't closed to us poor dopes who pay taxes? All closed. Nothing to see here. Now move along or he'll set Pretty Patel on you. So BJ thinks that this is all behind us. Kind of like the uh, perp in question. He's behind you. <coughs> but two of the party's most senior female backbenchers demanded he take more robust action. <laughs> what is it with these people and the word robust? I mean, I've gone through most of my life without hearing the word robust. Whoever uses the word robust, except lately, when absolutely everything must be robust and clear. The Prime Minister has made it very clear that he will deal with this robustly by ignoring it completely and hoping that we all concentrate on him cozying up to Vladimir Zelensky. As though Bodge wouldn't throw Vlod under a bus if he thought it would get him out of a scrape. Everyone's expendable. BJ has made that robustly clear, eh, Bodge? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Former ministers Caroline Noakes and Karen Bradley, who both now chair select committees, 
You see, now, that's supposed to be powerful select committees. I don't know why the press always write powerful in front of the words select committees, but they always do. Powerful select committees, and they never are. They just quiz some bloke sitting there in a bad suit and he bats the questions away and nothing ever happens. What's powerful about them? Select committees. They give them a little light roasting as though they're all just enjoying themselves, having a little game at our expense. They just go through the motions and nothing ever happens. Former ministers Caroline Noakes and Karen Bradley, who both now chair powerful select committees, said the party had to display a zero tolerance policy on sexual misconduct and demanded that Groper be stripped of the whip. <laughs> I mean, stripped of the whip. Could that sound any pervier? But it fits right in. Fits right in. Critics pointed out that Neil Parrish had resigned as Tiverton and Honiton MP for watching porn in the Commons, something less than an alleged sexual assault. Of course, he was looking for uh, tractors uh, at the time, uh, apparently. Hey, Bodge. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I mean, really, is this real life or am I hallucinating? <laughs> so Neil Parrish resigned, uh, but as that resulted in a uh, in the Tories losing a seat in the Commons, BJ won't make that mistake again, will you, Bodge? Um. No. That resulted in the by-election last week, where the Lib Dems overturned a, a Tory majority of more than twenty-four thousand to take the seat. Mr. Groper's majority in Staffordshire is 20,000. Not looking good, Bodge. In big trouble now. So it doesn't really matter from now on what a Tory MP does. I mean, they will pretty much get a pass on anything because BJ is desperate to cling on to power. No more resignations, no more sackings, no more by-elections. It's like the whole lot of them have got a free pass to do whatever they want now. A Tory MP could be found having sex with someone who wasn't their wife while trying to get their adulterous girlfriend a £100,000 a year job in the office, at work, and being found at it by a Minister of State and still not get sacked. Hey, Bodge? Yeah, 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 yeah. Where, 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 where do we... Asked whether BJ believes the issue is done and dusted, a number 10 spokesmodel told reporters today he, Chris Groper, resigned at that position, so I'm not aware of any sort of government investigation. Yeah, but <laughs> I, bet, I bet there isn't. <laughs> we found no evidence at all, mostly because we didn't look for it. <laughs> See the Russia report for full details. The uh, number 10 spokesmodel said, uh, he said that um, uh, whether to remain an MP was a matter for him as an individual, as in Mr. Groper. Really? But you just get to mark your own homework in Bodger's Paradise? How marvellous. Does that apply to anyone who wants to break the law? No. Apparently not. You, Sunshine, are going to jail. But in their letter, former ministers Caroline Noakes and Karen Bradley said the party, and by extension the government, are at risk of... Oh, you'll love this bit. <laughs> you might want to sit down for this. In their letter... Former Ministers Caroline Noakes and Karen Bradley said, and I quote, the party, and by extension the government, are at risk of serious reputational damage by the current approach. <laughs> <laughs> serious reputational damage. I think that ships and ships sailed and sunk, ladies. <laughs> Tottenham. Hello, Tom. I'm here. Well, <laughs> in March, yes, I'm here. Okay, I know it's only a second. I'm ball. here in March. I, I thought, oh, thank God, or maybe April, yeah, for March, April. I, I turned the heating off. I saved the money. Yeah. But when the 25 degrees hit, I'd forgotten how much I love it. The weather is fantastic. It's well, it's not fantastic. It's not it? fantastic at the moment. It's pretty rubbish at the moment. I, cool, I'd say. I'm wearing two layers of wool right now, and I'm thinking of putting a you third one on. You have to learn to love, Nick. No, I don't. Nick, you... No, no, well, no, no, you no, don't. You, no, 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 no. No. I'm learning to become love. You're learning to become love? Well, I'm working on it. Don't you mean, you lo don't you mean loved? No, 
Well, that doesn't sound too bad, actually. I could use a bit. Right. Well, so far, this uh, show makes uh, absolutely no sense to me. How about you? Pretty alarming that um, I'm running it, and I've still got absolutely no, I, no clue, not a single idea of where it is we're going. Durham, hello, Margaret. Hi, hi, Nick. Uh, before I, I ring about, before I tell you what I rang about, forget Paul McCarty's music, put the music off and read his lyrics. They are amazing. The man is a poet. The, the lyrics are just unbelievable. You will weep over some of those lyrics. <laughs> Okay. I'm going to okay. weep. That, that doesn't really sound like uh, something that I want to do. I'm going to be. Oh, you do. You I'm want to be, be moved. crying. You know, yes, you want to be. You want to be moved. You really do. Anyway, right. why I rang up? Okay. I'm ringing in defence of the children of this nation, who are being confused out of their tiny little minds. I used to teach teenagers, but even they were more confused than the infants. <laughs> We've suddenly got this world in which. Auntie Jill becomes Uncle John and Uncle Bob becomes Auntie Brenda and they are so confused. Then we'll have this plethora of pronouns chucked at them from nowhere. Dear God, what are we doing to our children? Life's confusing enough for them. Well, I Would think, you agree? Uh, I think that life is confusing for adults who are looking at this uh, anew in much the same way as uh, you know, older people can't really get their head around smartphones. But the kids, they don't seem very confused about it at all. I wouldn't worry about them, Margaret. I don't worry about them. They are, they are, bas they are going to be very, very confused. There was somebody on your station today, I want to mention no, no names, a highly intelligent woman. And I like listening to her. She revealed recently that she's heavily tattooed. Today she revealed she's bisexual. She loves women. She loves men. But she's married to a man. And I thought, well, who the hell is she married? And then I thought, do you know, I don't want to know about people's sex life. How does sex life? We we'll all have. I don't, I'm not interested in who she's <laughs> sleeping with and who she's sexually attracted to. We've gone, I'm doing a Mary White out here. A little We've bit, gone yeah. bloody sex, <laughs> sex mad. I do not want to know. Right. I'll tell you what, uh, Margaret, give us your address and I'll send you some pictures in the post. Disgusting. <laughs> Thanks, cheers, my dear. Greenford, hello, Paul. Hello, Nick. Yeah, I think it should be Liz Truss. Um, Rishi Sunak's good, but um, also Pretty Patel. But Liz Truss, she's, she's pretty formidable. And what they should Liz stand Truss for... is formidable? Yeah. In what way? Um, I think she's got a good portfolio at the foreign desk. Do you? She, she, yeah, I thought so. Right. Well, and, uh, what is it that makes you say that? Uh, just, just she, she, she held The way she together. wears her helmet? Yeah, yeah. But also, they should stand for... Um, uh, um, maintaining the status quo and reduction of expenditure, which they're going to try and do with um, the tax cuts, aren't they? A reduction of expenditure to, uh, in order to help whom? Um, that's that's the that's the princ principles of government: reduction of expenditure, maintaining the status quo, and the quality of opportunity. I got taught that in history. Did you? Right. Okay. Thanks for that, Paul. And education. Oldbury, Ranjit. Hi, you mate. You all right? Yes. Good. Thanks. Mate. Okay. <laughs> Hello, Nick. Sorry. Yeah. All right, Nick. You know, a couple of little things I want to pick up on. Yeah. You know, when the Air Force One lands anywhere, mm. right? You have a brand new, not, not a brand new, but a shiny um, 747 where the president comes out with his yes. sunglasses on and holding his missus' hand. Uh, 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 yeah. Uh. Right. And when you see Boris Johnson come out of a Grey, um, Matt, Matt Grey uh, yeah. Air Force um, uh, plane. It's like if it was or come, it comes out with Aunt Sally. Right. It is a little bit is embarrassing. That... This is the leader of this country. This this yeah. pile of laundry that's just rolled down the plane steps. Yeah. Mm. And and then I, while I've been waiting to speak to you, I was just wondering: Can you imagine a double date with Donald Trump, Melina, and? Boris Johnson is Mrs. Um, when they go to the toilet, what would the women talk about? Well, I have absolutely yeah. no idea, and it's not something I want to think of right now, Ranjit. He called you Melania, Melania. I don't care. She's actually not that bothered. Um, let's see if, we, if this bloke uh, works now, or his phone does, more specifically. Morgan. Hello, Nick. How yes, are you? Yes, sir. Great, mate. I think we should stop uh, blaming Boris Johnson for the old uh, party gate. I think it's... Uh, 
Up to the blame of those slimy servants in Whitehall. The slimy servants? Aye, aye, slimy servants. I bet you were partying up to the eyeballs yourself. You bet I'm what? You were partying up to the eyeballs yourself at the same time as Boris Johnson. Partying up to my eyeballs? Aye, aye. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's me all over, yeah. I'm always having a party. Thanks a lot, mate. That was definitely worth calling him back. Putney. Oliver. Hi, Nick. Oliver. Evening. Yeah, this, this is going to be a bit of a diatribe, but, um, yeah, I just want to say that uh, Boris Johnson's former boss, uh, Max Hastings, a respected Tory, a respected journalist, for years, has been saying that Boris Johnson was unfit yeah. to be Prime Minister. I know, he's been saying... Warning, warning! You've all made a bad mistake. Yeah, and I think one of the words, one of the, one of the things he said was, um, you couldn't trust him with your money, and you couldn't trust him with your wife, driving your wife home. No, I wouldn't trust him yeah. taking my dog for a walk. Okay, so... <laughs> What, why I'm saying this is that, that people have been saying this for years. Everyone knew what they were getting with Boris. Well, no, the, yeah. you say that, but I don't think people did. The, the people that say, oh, we knew what we were voting for, didn't. They didn't know it about Brexit, and they didn't know it about Johnson. They thought they were voting for that funny, cuddly bloke off the telly, not okay, understanding well, who he actually is. OK, OK, let's, let's leave the general public out of this. OK, let's, let's just talk about the Tory MP. They knew what they were getting, yeah? So I think it's a false narrative when they're saying that, oh, it's because he, 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 he's, uh, he's not, uh, you know, up to standard, when hmm. he, he tells lies. It's got nothing to do with that. It's about the money. Well, yeah. I'll tell you what it's about. It's about he, they, they supported him up until the point that he couldn't get away with it anymore. And then they, no, no, and then no, no, they no, said, no. oh, well, he's got nothing to do with me. I, I didn't like no, him. No, no, no. As soon as, as soon as people started paying more money for petrol prices, as soon as you go into the supermarket and the money's up and you, can't, and, and you can't afford to buy things, that's when people got scared and that's when they panicked. Like in 1992, George Bush, Clinton, it's a, the economy stupid. As soon as the economy started going real fast, that's when they bailed out on him. That's the real thing that happened. It had nothing to do with his morals. It had to do with that. Right. Well, uh, uh, I, I, I repeat my position that he... Uh, stopped being able to get away with it, whatever it may be at any given moment, because it, that's been his ability his entire life to just b blast through a place like a bull in a china shop, leaving a catastrophic mess behind him, and then doing his act. Pah! You know, all that. Where am I? Pah! <laughs> that, that, that stuff. And people go, oh, he's doing his best. And they let him off with it, like he's a five-year-old, like he's just William. And uh, he, his, he lost his ability to get away with it, and that's when they turned on him. No, no, okay. You I keep saying to... no, I'm right about this. I, th this is the overarching theme. You're just picking out a small instance. No, the Tories don't care about his morality. They don't give a damn about that. You're They're not all... listening to me, Oliver. I'm not talking about morality or humanity or any of those things. I'm talking about his ability to get away with it. Okay, okay. So we have to agree to disagree. Can I make a couple more points, please, Nick? Okay. Thanks, Nick. Um, the second point is that the Tories have run out. You, you, you said something interesting earlier. You said, what have we done to deserve this? I'll tell you what we've done. We voted Tory government for 40 years. No, we didn't. Then... No, we didn't. No, well, we, didn't. we didn't. 46% is what he got uh, last time around. That's 46% of the 70% that could be bothered to go out and vote, which is about a third. About a third of the voters gave them 100% of the power. Yeah, but how about 1979? And how about 1983? And how about 1987? And Pretty much two th two thirds of the time since the Second World War. In fact, since the, 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 over the last hundred years, two thirds of the time the Conservative Party have run this country on a minority of the votes. We didn't vote for him. This country didn't vote for him. A minority of the people in this country voted for him and the Conservative Party for about sixty odd percent of the time of the last hundred years. 
you're right. I can't argue with that point. All right. Wow. Well, on that uh, rare note of Concord. Oh. Time's up. Mitchum, Michael. Hello there, Nick. How are you? Good, thanks. Um, Nick, Nick, I've listened to you for years and always loved you. But at the moment, oh, I'm so disappointed. Oh, no. What have I said now? Well, no, it's just, it's just your attitude. Do you know, you're usually so bubbly and so lovely. <laughs> and you feel like you're with your brother in the, in, in the other room when you're listening to it, yeah? Mm. Um, but with Boris, okay, the bloke's down. Do you know what? One thing I never hear anyone say is that Boris lost his mum last year. Did, lot, did you know of, that? A lot of people lost relatives last year. I know. But all I'm saying is that bloke went through as much as anybody else did last year. Not really. Oh, come on. Not really. He, he was running. Not really. Not, he was running. Not really. Was people uh, obeyed the rules. I mean, if, if you really want to talk about it, people obeyed the rules and he didn't. So not really, Michael. A lot of people lost people that they love and did not go to see them at the moment of their dying. And nor would they, were they able to go to their funeral because they were obeying the rules that Boris Johnson set. Meanwhile, Boris Johnson was having a party. And not just one, but multiple ones. So you can feel sorry for him if you like, but don't, um, uh, don't cry your tears on this show. Uh, Penge. Peter. Hello. Yes, Peter. Yes, um... I had a nice night out last night. Did and you? Walking home, walking home last night, I was very hungry. Mm -hmm. And um, Pizza Hut very kindly gave me a pizza that they was um, going to throw away anyway. Did they? Uh, yeah, which they sometimes do. Why would they, they throw a pizza different. away? Um, well, sometimes they get an order that's, you know, oh. burnt or, you know, just gone wrong or they didn't put whatever right. so... They give them away, which is quite... Well, so you were just walking by the front of the shop and they said, Oi, it, It's a known thing that if you pop in there and ask if they have any cancellation. Oh, well, I didn't know it. They're giving away well, free I... pizza. <laughs> All you got to do is <laughs> ask. <laughs> I've given my whole thing, a whole star forever now. You realise that, don't you? Well... Everybody will be nicking my pizza. Yeah. Anyway, the moral, the moral of the story... Go on. ...is when I got down the road, there was a chap... Um, in the doorway, wrapped up in a blanket, but, you know, shivering. And I said, you hungry? Hello, hello, are you hungry? Yeah. And he said, you yeah, a bit. I gave him half of this pizza, and I think I really made his day. Half? So, what goes around comes around. Well, yeah, you might get um, a half of someone else's good fortune. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I guess that's all right. Yeah, no, that's not bad. Oh, okay. Half oh, is fair. Surely yeah. half is fair. You get a, you get a ding. All right. Thank Th you thanks very a lot. Much, all right. Thank you very much, Peter. Of course, it wasn't that generous because he got it for free. I guess it was his. After he had got it for free, it, it then became his. But um, I don't know. To want that that much praise, really, for giving away something that had been given to him. Uh, if he'd given him some money, perhaps, or his shoes. Then I would have, uh, you know, then it would have been different. You know, he, he, he's, he would keep the pizza and give the bloke his shoes. He could tell him to eat those. I'm just trying to help. Highgate, hello, Claire. Claire. Hi, Nick. Hi. There you are. Nick, can you give me yeah. a favour? Um, uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, go yeah. ahead. Yeah, can you hear me? Well, kind of, yeah. Right. Are you right. speaking to um, me yeah, in a submarine? Yeah, a year ago now. You didn't... You seem to be coming. Oh, you seem I'm to so be sorry. C um, Claire, hang on, let me sit up. Maybe that will work. Yeah, put one end to your ear so you can hear me. Oh, hang on, I don't know what to do. And the other end to oh, your I'm mouth. Hang on, hang on, I know why it was. So sorry, Nick. Right, Nick. Claire. Yeah, I've done it. I know where my mouth is, just about. Nick, a, a while ago, you did me a favour. I rang up and complained to you that you were calling Boris Johnson Boris and said, could you please not do that? And you started calling him Bodge or Bodger. Bodger. And that's, um, I just want to ask another favour because the, we're heading towards the election at some point. The marketing has to start as soon as possible and Bodge is quite affectionate. <laughs> Would you consider, please, changing his nickname to something like The Scoundrel? 
or something. So it's something that, that defines what he is. Because I think Bodge is still quite affectionate. I, yeah, Doesn't I, quite tell a story. I do Could agree. You something? Will I, you do me a favour? I agree. I'll pay, you, I'll pay you. I agree. In, um, but, but most of what you yep. say, yeah, Bodge, there is um, a certain uh, affectionate ring to it. How about I just use his uh, initials, BJ? Yeah. Well... Well, that's a bit, it's a bit sexualized, isn't it? I mean, it's a bit of a joke. It's his, what about calling it, him Johnson? What about just actually using the grown-up term? Right, well, ditto. John, Johnson. Yeah, but ditto to what you just said. I huh? mean, BJ, Johnson, I mean, it's all a bit, uh, <laughs> it, it's all, all a bit near the knuckle, isn't it? Disgusting. Well, the thing is... <laughs> Well, Johnson, I suppose. Well, but Johnson is the only name that, pe that, that the press uses in the in mature articles for for people. They use the surname, Mr. and it's Johnson. just a reminder that he's yeah. supposed to be a professional politician. But that no, not Miss No, not Mister Johnson. Just no, Johnson. That, that's what they say. They, or they print the scoundrel. They print, they print or his something close. You, you can't yeah. actually hear me, can you? Claire? <laughs> you haven't got the phone to your ear, have you? You, you just keep blasting yes, through me like a snowplow. Have, have. Right. Okay. <laughs> well, that's what I love to do, Nick. But I can hear you. Can you hear me? No. <laughs> oh, we've gone. <laughs> No, you can't. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, I, I can't. <laughs> Nick, I adore I you. Good night. All right, I can't. I can't. Can't hear a word, Claire. You're getting fainter. <laughs> Was she loud enough? Yes. A little bit, yeah. Plenty loud enough. I could hear every word, apart from those that I couldn't. Exeter. Hello, John. Oh, hello. Is this um oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven four? Uh, no. I'll put you on hold. You've dialed the wrong number. Hull. Charles. Oh, hi, Nick. Yes, Charles. What do you want? I'm, I'm literally <laughs> just about 100 yards outside my home. I'm in the street, out in the air. Is that wise? Um, well, I'll let you know if my right leg suddenly becomes quite a, a little bit difficult. Right. Okay. I want you to let me know straight away that happens. All right. Pop it on a postcard and <laughs> um, stick it in the post. With, bear with me. Um... I was, uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, I was, I was outside a major supermarket waiting at the bus stop. In Mind you, minding your own affairs. Da 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 da. Yes, yes. <laughs> I know. Yeah. And and um, there was a woman there. She was vaguely Spanish. It turned out. No, she wait a minute. Came wait, wait, Peru. wait, wait, wait. What does vaguely Spanish mean? Well, you know, she looked very sort of. She had the dress and the accent. Should we say? Right. He was eating tapas at the time. Go on. <laughs> not, not on the bus stop, but it's an idea. But anyway, so so I, I, it turns out she was from Peru. And I said, oh, General Pinochet w it was allowed in London and Margaret Thatcher let him off. She allowed him to leave London after a couple of days. Mm -hmm. Let him off. Go on. And so, and she said, oh, yes. And I don't like that Prime Minister Johnson. And I was a bit taken aback. He lies, he lies just like the, the right-wing leaders in, in, in uh, Peru. I do not like Prime Minister Johnson. Right. Well, and now, um, are you translating uh, from the original Spanish, or was she, is she actually speaking like this? Well, she was very vehement. Right. Very vehement. Yeah. I was well, a little I can taken imagine. aback. Being um, accosted at a bus stop. Yeah, he, and he, he's almost like he, we're still in a fight between the left and the right. Who are? We are. You know, um, over over who wins, you know, and, and uh, at the moment the right wing are winning with Prime Minister Johnson, haha, -ha, but, you know, you never know what's going to happen in the future. That was our bus stop correspondent from Hull called Charles. Thank you, Charles. Catch up with you next week. <laughs> By the way, tapas at the bus stop does sound like an excellent idea for a business, no? No. Tapas at the bus stop. Biked over to you at a moment's notice while you stood standing there waiting for the 38. It's not coming. They're on strike. Swindon. Hello, Carrie. Hi, Nick. 
Right, this is going to be weird, okay? <laughs> well, it has been so far. Right, do you remember when I phoned you a long time ago and told you about um, Star Wars? No. And Joseph Campbell? Oh, uh, no. Okay. <laughs> right, okay. I now know what's happening. What right? is happening? Mm -hmm. lay, okay. lay it on us, baby. Okay. Could you, could you stop breathing down the phone? Seriously, it's freaking me out. It's right. No, it's not all it's right. My, it's, my, it's my voice. It's my voice. Okay, um, then. Okay, listen. Just so the listeners can do some homework, you don't have to do it. Homework? Um, but, Miss, Joseph, it's the Joseph, weekend. They, 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 they can find this out when they, when they, when they listen to your podcast. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. And look into it then. Yeah. Okay? So that they will then understand, right? And, and then they'll all phone you up and they'll all talk about this as well. Talk about right? what? What is, what is well, it that you're well, saying, Carrie? You now, yes. Right. right. In pre so previously, that, that was the, well, pre that, that was the warm up, the preamble to this pre um, amble. Go on. Pre previously, when I told you the story of Star Wars and I didn't know who Vladimir Putin was. So, right. you know the story of Star Wars, but you don't know uh, who Vladimir Putin is. Darth Vader was Adolf Hitler, right? Um, I didn't know Obi -Wan that. Obi-Wan Kenobi was Rudolf Hess. Right. Boris Johnson was Jabba the Hutt. We yeah. did talk about this a long time ago, Yeah, right? I've, I've tried to forget it. Yeah. Thanks for reminding but, me. No, 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 I've assessed it. I've assessed it now. This goes on, right? Okay? Right. Vladimir Putin is now um, Darth Vader. Right. Is Vladimir uh, Putin is now in, in, in within right. the Darth Vader. Carrie, Carrie. Boris Johnson Carrie. has become. Carrie. Has become. Carrie. Can you pop this down on a postcard for me and um, stick it in the post? Send it to the following address uh, Red Hill. Hello, Nigel. Oh, uh, good evening, um, Nick. Um, yes, he probably introduced it perhaps. Boris is in another world, in Treehouse, Pepper Big, Big World. Um, you, you're hilarious. I was listening last night, you said um, perhaps his nose is growing and things like that. Um, <laughs> it's, it's hilarious. I just had to phone in. Yeah, I, 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 you I, had I, to? Okay. All right. Well, thanks for doing that, Nigel. Appreciate it. He just, want, he just had to. It was in him and it had to come out. Don't keep it in. Let it out. Lewisham, d -Ro. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, where do we start? What? Where do we start? Start at the very beginning. It's a very good place to start. Okay, brilliant. Right, um... Well, my start is Brexit. If you remember, it was Nigel Farad and, um... Boris started out the, the Brexit, then all of a sudden they've split. Yeah. Yeah? So when they've split now, Boris has been the Prime Minister and what's his name? Farage has kept up the Brexit. <laughs> anyway, let's move on, let's move on, let's move on quickly because if we didn't go into Brexit, they couldn't have put us into lockdown. If we didn't go into Brexit, they couldn't have put us into lockdown? Yeah, definitely not. Why not? Because the old laws would have kept us out of Brexit. Old laws? What laws? The old laws, what we had before, would have kept us out of the lockdown. We was protected from that lockdown. By old, old... by old laws? Yeah, the old laws. What laws? The laws that they've changed when they changed Brexit. Right. Um, I'm just going to hazard a guess that you don't really know what you're talking about, D-Row. I do. I definitely oh, do. Oh, okay. Well, I, I must be thinking of somebody else then. How's Brexit going, by the way? Brexit's going great. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, d Row, for whatever that was. Atlanta. Hello, Graham. Oh, Nick, thanks a lot for taking my call. I haven't spoken to you in a long time. I thought I was blacklisted for some reason. Not, hey, not uh, to my you, knowledge. Is it, is it lost on you that there's a, some kind of parallel universe going on the way everybody hates uh, Boris, he's got uh, uh, 55 uh, supporters leaving his office. Board, B Biden's got 36% approval. 80% wow. 
don't want him to run again. No. And he's lost he's lost 17 uh, members and his crew. And, and, and not only that, we used to send all kinds of oil to Europe and wherever, and that's not happening anymore because there's, there's no permits being issued. There's no action on any permits. The oil companies are afraid to invest any money because if somebody's going to slam them. Uh, you know, and, and it's just a whole... You got Ukraine, you got... Whoa, we whoa, whoa. Oil Graham, Graham, you're all over the shop. The oil companies... I know. The I, oil, I, listen wait. to me. The oil companies yeah. aren't investing in Europe? Of course they are. They're, they're Why? everywhere. Why? No. I, no. I, I sp either I misspoke or you misheard. I mean, they're not investing in projects in the United States because oh. they won't be approved for doing what they want to do. The oil you know, companies aren't investing in the United States. I'm not sure that's actually true. What, what is it uh, you're well, get, what okay. is it you're getting at? I'm trying. To, I'm getting at the, that you've got the same exact problems that we have. We got two world leaders that are out of their minds. <laughs> well, that is a good point. Yeah, and maybe three with with Putin. Well, maybe. You but know. that's a whole other story. That's a whole other story. Isn't it just? Yeah. Why is uh, Biden so unpopular? I mean, is it is it just by he, dint of him coming to power as the world collapsed? Uh, no, I don't. And I don't think I don't think the world collapsed. I, I, I obviously the pandemic was something that was horrible. Yeah. But there have been other there have been other horrible things that were. Well, World now, now, two, we, well, now we're coming one. into this extraordinary uh, economic downturn, which is a pretty unfortunate time to um, acquire the uh, the top job. So is it just that? Is it just unfortunate timing? I don't know. It's, well, it's the, you know, you talk about the dumb and stupid who voted conservative, the younger one, then you vote for everybody over 60 voting conservative. And I guess that's true because if you're, Let's see, you're heartless if you don't vote liberal when you're young, and you're yeah. an idiot if you don't vote conservative when you're old. Uh, but I, but I don't know what but, you're, you're only, but that is predicated on you only having your self-interest at heart when you're older. I mean, what you just said, which is, I can't remember who said that uh, initially, but, but it's, there's, it's, true, it's a truism that younger people... Uh, vote for the party that is uh, more interested in helping a lot of people. By extension, when you get older, you're less interested in helping a lot of people, and you're just interested in helping yourself. And that's the difference between young people vote left-wing and older people vote right-wing. There's more altruism in, with the older set than there is with the younger set. And that's true. There's more altruism with in this country with republicans and there are with democrats they tip better <laughs> republicans tip better they tip you know, better tip. are you kidding me how do you know that yeah no how do you know I, that because it, it, i read statistics nick Come you on, read, read statistics about tipping based on the party that they voted for the last time you know what graham i'm going to choose to not believe that but better luck next time canuck oh mel Hi, Nick. How are you? Good, thanks. Uh, I like Penny Morton. I've actually looked her up on YouTube. She's quite a good speaker, but she won't get to the last two. Um, you know, the dark forces are going to start sooner or later to get rid of her because she's, according to poll, she'd beat every single one of them in a one-on-one. -on -one. So she's going to be the target now. And, uh, but who who would be the, who is behind the dark forces of which you speak? I can never remember his name. He used to be. I know he's a local MP actually. Um, I can never remember his name. He's no, but I mean, uh, uh, on behalf of whom? Uh, probably a Sunak, but uh, I think it'll be Sunak and Liz Truss in the final two. Right. Because the right will have to come together sooner or later. Because you got Lee. Um, you got her, Braverman, and Badenoch, I think. They're all very right-wing. They can't all win. They can't all get to the final, so they're going to collaborate beyond one in the end. And I think it'll be them too. I, I, I would like Penny Morton. Uh, like I say, she's a good speaker. And yeah, she is a nice-looking woman. <laughs> OK. <laughs> An unsolicited testimonial. Thanks, Mel. Right, here's a caller in Spain. That's a bit vague. Mike, where are you? 
It's Mike. Mike, I'm in Spain. Uh, yeah, I know I that, but listening. where in Spain? Well, Torrex, Torrex. I'm in Torrex, near Malaga. North of Malaga, about 45 minutes. Oh, yes. Very nice. Very, very upper, nice. Upper mountain. Hilly. Yeah, well, near a mountain, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, I, I just, I just want to say that I, I was in Manchester Airport this morning and I parked my car in Terminal 1 and I was in departures by, it, within 20 minutes. No queues for uh, bag drop, no queues through security and I got there an hour early because of all the queues from all the news hype Yeah, and there's nothing, no queues. I, I was straight through. Wow. So, it's propaganda. <laughs> propaganda. <laughs> <laughs> propaganda. With what intent? Well, it was news hype. It, Ma making honestly, you, it, it right. was just so, it was so smooth. It was great. Right. It was well, maybe, maybe, maybe the the consequence of all that, all those news stories, showing people what a night, nightmare a airports were. Maybe that's caused them to all not go to the airport. Maybe. Yeah. What's but the weather I, like there in Spain at the moment, there, Mike? It's beautiful. It's, it's, yes, it's thank like, you, but not... we do not wish to know that. Islington, hello, Noel. Hello? No. Yes? Yes, no. Um, you know, you keep talking about long titles, isn't it? Yes. Um, the song of music, Super California or something fresh. Super, <laughs> Super, Super, Super California, uh, yeah. Um, Fragilistic expialidocious. Yeah. Taking, yeah? taking, super California, taking drugs fries my mind. Groovy. Something like that. Super California. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> super how, how, are you, how are you spelling, how are you spelling that, Noel? Super. Yeah. Fragilistic. Mm hmm Expialidocious. Right. No, close, but uh, <laughs> no cigar on, on, on this, uh, this time. But better luck next time, Noel. Thanks for playing. You get nothing. Good day, sir. Uh. So this is until we found out. This was the story this morning. And wow, it's really changing fast, ain't it? Anything could happen in the next two minutes. So this is what we uh, heard this morning until uh, they knew that we found out about it. Bodge wants to stay on as caretaker Tory leader to ensure the competent running of the country continues until a new leader is found to replace him. Uh, of course not. I'm kidding. He wants to stay on because uh, that way he can lounge around at checkers and throw a massive party. <laughs> That's what this guy's like. He gets the sack because he threw too many parties and so he throws another party. Learned any valuable lessons lately, Bodge? Um... He's sticking around like a bad smell because he wanted to throw a big wedding party for himself and his current wife at Checkers later this month. Best to throw the wedding party before you get divorced. Make sure you get it that way round. The Prime Minister and his current wife Carrie have planned a lavish bash at the Grace and Favour country home to mark their marriage. Grace and Favour. As in free. Very expensive to those that can't afford it, free to those that can. The couple tied the knot in a secret ceremony at Westminster Cathedral in front of just a handful of guests in May 2021. What's the, um, the appropriate religion's uh, policy on getting married like 50 times? They then celebrated in the uh, Downing Street Garden for uh, about six months, I think but they were only allowed 30 guests because of COVID restrictions in place at the time. <laughs> yeah, because, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's all about obeying uh, the rules. I followed the ministerial guidance at all times. 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 The, couple, the couple's checkers do, uh, which was planned for July the 30th, was expected to be a much bigger, more glamorous affair. God, I wonder who's going to pay for that. Two separate sources told the Mirror that uh, Mr. and Mrs. Johnson were keen to go ahead with the party, to which they had, invi had invited many of their family and friends. <laughs> That's what it says here. Chequers is a 16th century mansion with a heated indoor swimming pool, putting green, and 1,500 acres of grounds, which you can't get anywhere near to, even though you pay for it. It was donated to the nation by Lord and Lady Lee of Fairham. Uh, 
as a place of rest and recreation for prime ministers because some premiers did not even have their own country estates. Can you believe that? Built in 1565 and costing taxpayers a million pounds a year. A million pounds a year to upkeep a house that already exists. Not to build one from scratch. That's just to heat and dust it. Well, uh, Bodge has got an enormous uh, number of uh, knickknacks. He's spread all uh, over the place, which needed need to be dusted uh, daily. By a daily. The Chequers Trust received a £916,000 grant in aid from the Cabinet Office last year, up from 882000 the previous year and eight hundred and seventy nine grand the uh, year before that. So it's uh, about a million pounds grant in aid from the Cabinet Office. In other words, you paid for it. Grant in aid. <laughs> Are they kidding? <laughs> The Grade 1 listed manor has walled gardens, a vast art collection, and a half-kilometre driveway through a valley lined by beech trees. Wow. But allies of the PM dismissed the suggestion that he was going to have a par air, saying he wanted to stay on his caretaker out of a sense of duty to guide the country until a new leader is found. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice to see that through all this, the Tories haven't lost their sense of humour. Just doing your duty... Bodge. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where, 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 where do we? One uh, Tory source told the Mirror, it beggars belief that even after all the criticism that Johnson has faced regarding integrity and probity, one of the reasons he's staying is to have his wedding party at Chequers. It's a national asset, not his personal home. He said that Johnson should do the decent thing and find a different venue. And Bodge should do the decent thing and leave number 10 immediately. Well, you know what? Half that happened. He did get a new venue. After we found out about his little scheme. And as for the doing the decent thing part, well, that ship sailed and sunk. But a spokesmodel for Mr Johnson said the PM has a strong sense of duty. <laughs> and will continue to serve his country until a new leader is in place solely to continue his obligation to the public. Anybody believe that? Um... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, uh, it's like a troll farm over there. They must wake up in the morning and think, what can we say to them today? A strong sense of duty. Oh, do me a favour. Bodge intends to remain in number 10 until his successor is elected, or until after his successor is elected. He'll, he'll nail the door shut. There's not any agreement yet on when he actually has to leave number 10. Just minutes before the PM delivered his statement, number 10 sources claimed there were tensions between him and key aides over whether he would commit to a departure date. He didn't even agree to stand down. Not really. Speaking outside Downing Street, he said, I've agreed with Sir Graham Brady, the chairman of our backbench MPs, that the process of choosing that new leader should begin now. The timetable will be announced next week, and I've appointed a cabinet to serve as I will until a new leader is in place. So no, no actual mention of the word resign. No indication that he's responsible for his own downfall. No apology, no contrition, no remorse, no actual indication that he intends to leave at some date. We're just assuming that he will, because that's the decent and normal thing to do. But we're a little past decent and normal, eh, Bodge? I, I can't comment on that. I, 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 I... Greenford. Hello, Paul. Hello, yeah, Nick, yeah. Um, I mean, there's goings on in Westminster. It could be like, um, yes, minister, you know, it's pretty... But it, it, um, it's not satire, it's true life. It's quite alarming what's going on. Yeah, are you alarmed right now? I'm, al I'm alarmed. At this moment? Uh, yeah. How does your alarm manifest itself, Paul? Um, it starts off with a feeling in the gut feeling. <laughs> the heart the heart, and the, the head don't play a part. It's all gut feeling. Right, it's all gut feeling, right. There's nothing going on with your head. <laughs> nothing at all. No, but oh. but I was at radio... I was at, I was at Glastonbury 97 and Radiohead played. Yes, I saw that on the telly. It was good. Yeah, it was good. But, um... Vinyl's great, isn't it? I go to Notting Hill for classical records. Oh, blimey, you're all over the shop. You need an A to Z to figure out where you're going with this. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, Nick. I, I'm, 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 I've, had a, I've had a good day. Yeah, you've had it up to here. Yeah, I get it. All right, thanks a lot, Paul. Dewsbury. Graham. Hi, Nick. How are you doing? Good, thanks. 
Good. Um, I just wanted to um, counterbalance, uh, I think it was Margaret earlier on who said that uh, kids are really confused by uh, sort of the modern world with gender issues and sexuality issues. Um, yeah. I, I think she's completely wrong. I've got... Uh, I've got two kids, nine and eleven. Um, uh, now, I, I just explain that's not what I call them. Um, to be sure, that sounds odd. Um, uh, they're, they're great, though. Fred and Rose. Fred and Rose are they're really good. That, kids. that would um, be really strange if you, if one was called nine. <laughs> yeah, one was I called was eleven. It would be wrong to name my kids after such a horrific event, I think. Um, so, um, but yeah, Fred and Rose are great, and they've really taught me a lot. Um, and uh, like, they've taught you was, a lot. Yeah, I think so. They've, they've straightened things out for me because I get confused by the modern world myself. I'm 44. Um, you know, when I was growing up, gender fluid was the reason you hid your bedsheets from your mum if you had a good dream. And oh, okay. My daughters, this you know, is not a listener with material, is it? I think he is. Better luck next time, Graham. Thanks a lot, mate. I do apologise. Glasgow, Eric. Hi, Nick. How are you? Good, thanks. Marvellous show. Marvellous show, Nick. In fact, I didn't expect you on a Tuesday night. Ah, yes, yeah, well, yeah. Uh, Tom is um, uh, elsewhere, so I'm filling you're, in for Tom. You're running yeah. the show. As you, you know, you don't have, in fact, I, I find you the most um, entertaining, uh, <laughs> especially at the weekends. Anyway, I'd like to have the fact, Nick, that um, I live in Scotland, and I'll tell you a little story about what happened when I had to go to hospital. I got the COVID, and uh, I'd, 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 I'd hurt myself at work, and I had to go to hospital. So I phoned the NHS 24, which were absolutely fantastic with me. They actually sent me a car to be picked up from my home address, taken to Queen Victoria Hospital in South Glasgow, where I was, where what happened is they dropped me off there, the driver dropped me off. When you say car, do you mean cab? Cab, yeah. A they taxi? Got me a, a transport. They got me transport to pick me up from my home address, a, a nice big luxury a seven-seater vehicle that was the screened up and all the rest of it, you know. For okay, so not not just myself. an ordinary taxi. It was a no, no, a medical no, it was a, vehicle, it was a, right? Uh, yeah, a vehicle used uh, specifically for okay. picking people up and transporting them to hospital. Right. And they picked me, they picked me up from a home address, took me to the hospital, the Queen Victoria, should, should I say? That's a new hospital in the South Glasgow. Anyway, I was taken there. I walked straight through um, from where I was dropped off at the entrance point of the hospital, straight through, I didn't even have to wait, straight through in to see the doctor, the jeep, the, 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 the general practitioner, the, mm. the, the, the veteran doctor, straight away, I didn't even have to wait, and when I, when I mean uh, the place was like a mortuary, it was, there was no people there, it was really <laughs> like a ghost, it was like a ghost. <laughs> Probably a ghost the wrong phrase in this hospital. context, but yeah, I, I understand no, what you mean, yeah. But, but what I mean is, is here, Nick, um, I'm very uh, privileged. I've lived in London when I when I when I when I was working down south, and and I can understand the difficulties being so many people yeah. down in England. Um, to, 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 but to every now and again, on. a story of great success uh, pops up. It, and, was, a, but, it was a story of great success, yeah. Nick, and, and and I'm just emphasising that the. It's not all bad. Every now and again, uh, you uh, you do get um, a, a story like that. Lewisham. Hello, Jane. Hello, Nick. Jane. Well, ho hopefully, Budge is moving on to better things, and we are moving on to a better country. And there are a couple of them in there that would be... Okay. Okay. Right. That's what we got to deal with. Okay. That's the best we can hope for. Okay. With with this lot, yes. Um, and this um, net carbon zero. Yeah. That is causing all the trouble. No, it isn't. We are nowhere near ready for that. Well, it's, it's a way it's off. Just... It's a way off before we have to get there. No, it's not. It's only about seven years, isn't it? You know what I mean? It, it's, we're just not ready for it. So. If we all oh. pull together as a team, it's possible, Jane. You see, the thing is, all of the problems that are facing the world at the moment, everything that we're facing at the moment, it will be as nothing compared to a worst-case scenario with uh, climate change. I mean, we're already seeing it, but people are pretending that it's not happening. Wembley, Lawrence. Ah, oh, good evening. You're on... Uh top form tonight. Thanks, Nick. Lawrence. <laughs> um, 
I would like to uh, nominate my candidate for the next Prime Minister, right a up. man uh, who's shown himself uh, to be a man of integrity, mm -hmm. this is uh, what, what we want. Um, Ian Duncan Smith. Yes, what do you think? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I I refer you to the answer that Goofy gave some seconds ago. Yeah? What was that? But that was... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, right. no, seriously, I think, uh, I think he would be a good uh, Prime Minister. Oh, you are being I mean, serious? He, I am being serious. Right. I mean, he resigned and... Uh, um, I, I listened to him recently, um, and he, he um, yeah, he came across, uh, uh, he, he, he had some good um, things to say is about that a the present uh, cost of living uh, crisis. Is that a fact? Well, um, I yeah. would encourage him to throw his hat in the ring too. The more the better. Right. <laughs> Yeah, great. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm getting settled in for the show. I can't wait. This is going to be great. Thanks a lot, Lawrence. Thought he was being sarcastic. <laughs> You'd never know. Glasgow. Eric. Hello, Nick. Eric. Hello, 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 hello. We're all talking about this weather all about poor Mr. My prime, your prime minister, and my prime minister, mm. Mr. Boris Johnson. Yeah, not and, my, uh, not my prime minister. Well, it's uh, if you live in the eighty kingdom of uh, our finest, greatest Britain, then it will be your prime minister unless you live in another country. Okay, that's fact. Anyway, go on to. Um, <laughs> We're not to, interested uh, in facts on this show, but go ahead. Well, uh, well, well, Nick. What I'm trying to imply on is. Uh, you wouldn't be like to have his shoes at the minute. No. Being the most wanted man no. can you, in Russia. Can you, you know, in, in, so he's, done, he's done rather well considering the war. And all the wars, especially uh, the war in Afghanistan, yeah. where the Americans and the British were defeated by men in the sandals riding bicycles. Right. Now, going on to the fact of our next Prime Minister. The next Prime Minister, Nick, is going to be Mr. Jacob rees Mogg. Right, And okay. he's going to bring some aristoc aristocrat aristocratic stuff back to Britain right, because that's well, what we I, need. I, I can't wait for that, Eric. Uh, thanks a lot for that very, very informative call. Nottingham. Hello, Richard. How are you going, Naughty Nick? How's it going, mate? Good, thanks. Um, now, I've got two questions for you, kid. Uh, the first one, if you're going to do a film of Boris Johnson's life, mm. what actor, alive or dead, would you choose to play him? Now, I'm going to throw Sid James in the ring. No, I would say, I well, on that, um, on, on that, uh, oh, God, what's the word? On, on that level, Hattie Jakes is actually the, <laughs> the correct answer. <laughs> Hattie Jakes. Uh, and the other one, what do uh, Keir Starmer and John Major both have in common? Go on. They both enjoy a good curry. Right. Okay. Uh, don't forget the drink. Booze. Liverpool. Gareth. Henrik. Gareth. Great show as usual. You make my drive home very entertaining. But uh, oh, thanks, I was Gareth. listening. Oh, my pleasure. I, I was listening to uh, Rishi's the clips from Rishi's uh, pitch, and yeah. it was really quite pathetic. But I thought. He can't win because immediately upon appointment, he'd be the shortest serving prime minister, wouldn't he? And that wouldn't work very well at all. Uh, and Was that a height if, joke? Well, it was a height joke, yeah. But if they put the nuclear codes on a high shelf as well, we'd be in trouble <laughs> if the Russian situation gets worse. Oh, come um, on, Gareth. Would... There's so much more that you can criticise a man for uh, <laughs> other than his height, which is out with his control. Well, his, his financial policies have been terrible right. too. Right, there I, you I, go. I, well, I read that Pedigree Chum has gone bust this week. They've had to call the, re the retrievers in. Oh, and it's, it, no, it's a, a listener with way too much material. Oh, I, do, I, do. I think you've said enough, Gareth. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> He'd got some uh, more uh, jokes uh, written down there, but uh, I I saved us the trouble. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Red Hill. Hello, Nigel. Uh, good evening, Nick. Um, I was listening to you, and you're a very intelligent man with the views. It is going far right, do you think? It's, um, and I, I think what it amounts to is underhandedness and treachery, you know? Um, I'm afraid to say this, and the rule of law 
he's, he's not behaving. I mean, look at the direction he's going. He's heading. Um, he's, yes. Um, what is Oh, I can ask you what it is. Yeah, I remember <laughs> someone coming out with that one. Treachery and, and attacks. Like, you know, but, um, he, um, he, he, he's, low, he's low on it. He, uh, you know, to be, to be getting attacks. Right. I, 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 I'm understanding some of it, uh, Nigel, to be honest. Uh, not all, but some. Um, yeah, do I think that they're, they're l l lurching to the right? Yes. Because they have a specific job to do, and that is to appeal to their um, their uh, ilk. Uh, Leeds. Hello, Felix. Uh, hi. Um, basically, what I want to say is that um, I, I think you, you're quite wrong about Boris in that he's obviously a very boisterous man, and I think he is very similar to Keith Moon in that he he just he just goes for it and he's wild and he's and he's exciting and it's what the public wants to be honest like he's, he's an exciting he's, leader he's exciting yeah of course he is yeah and he's he's got great policies he's sending them all back to Rwanda yeah okay N nice effort there uh, Felix better luck next time He's exciting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where, 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 where do we? <laughs> Exeter. Hello, John. Oh, hello, John. Oh, hello, Nick. Um, I'm a six-time caller. Oh yes. So um, I'm, 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 I'm not that nervous. I'm practiced. Okay. You are practiced now. Yeah, I'm practiced now, and I, I think I've been listening to you. I think that you make a really good contribution to the program. I think that you should be a regular. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thanks, John. I'll think about it. I can't guarantee anything, but uh, you know, if I'm in the area, I'll uh, I'll show up tomorrow. How does that sound? <laughs> A listener with material. Oh no! Uh, let's have um, Walthamstow, James. Hello, James. Hi, how are you doing? Good, Good thanks. Um, I've, I listen to your show like. Uh, Sorry, I just didn't put on the spot. But basically, yeah. Um, what? I listen to your show. I think it's a really good show. I but? just want to say, yeah, thumbs up to you and all your studio and that. Thanks. Thanks. And also, Asma, if you're listening. Okay. That's personal messages. Call him up directly, James. If you have something uh, to say to uh, Ashmal, whoever that may be, then uh, call him up directly. It's the uh, the personal touch which means so much. I don't know about you, but uh, just from the moment you started talking... Warning! Warning! I got warning bells ringing in my mind. Big bells. Huge. Rushton. Hello, James. Hello, mate. All right? Good, thanks. Um, I've got three friends who drive um, trains. They're out on the bed. Two of them drive um, freight. Right. One of them drives normal train. They are on the best part, the freight one, the best part of £100,000 a year. They go to work. If they can't drive a train, they get picked up by taxi. They get taken to rugby. Train can't drive. They get taken home. They get paid money. Train drivers are an absolute fortune. They're on 100000 a year. How do they earn that? Um, why? Because they go no, not, not why. Okay. Not why. How? I, I was... Um... How? Because that's how it all works out. The, one of my friends, he gets picked up from Ruston, he'll get taken to rugby to drive a freight train, and they'll say to him, oh, that train can't drive today. They'll be like, well, why not? This is all, something's wrong. With the old signals and this and that, he gets taken home, he gets... He's on the best part of a half thousand pound a year. Well, I, do you know where, where, I where do you where do you get that figure from, though? I mean, I didn't think that they earned anything close to that. He's on the best part of a hundred thousand. You, you keep saying that, but where do you get that figure from? But he's told me. Right. Well, may, maybe he's not telling the truth. Uh, and do you know what happens when I try to go to Thameslink? I don't. And I went to I went to Thameslink in two thousand. I left the army two thousand and. Two, what do you mean you went Thameslink. went to train? You mean you worked? I for applied them? to Thameslink. Right, okay. applied to Thameslink yeah. to be a train driver. Went to Waterloo, just over the road, and did the tests. And they said, "Yep, yeah, cool, you passed it all." And you know what happened? Two days before, they said, "You haven't." Um, sorry, we made a mistake, and it was um, 
you know, like when they say, well, it's, um, what's that thing they have to say, well, we need gender or colour or this or that. Right. The same thing happened when I tried to join the Metropolitan Police. So you were the incorrect gender or, or colour? Well, right. A white bloke who did well and wasn't allowed to join the Met well, or Thames Link because, because of uh, I'm white. Right, okay, well... That you may say that I couldn't possibly comment, not knowing uh, the situation that you're describing. But uh, thanks for that, to James Stratford. Hello, Henry. Nick. Henry. How are you? I'm great, mate. You always sound good to me. Thanks. It's a pleasure. Is this a human being, or like is this Memorex? Are you a robot? No. Affirmative. <laughs> Uh, this is the result of too many free festivals back in the 60s. Oh, Groovy. right. Burned it some brain good. cells, I see. But we didn't lose anything. Because we had nothing to lose. We now didn't today lose... Now we are rich and fantastic. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> do, you know why, do you know why I'm rich and fantastic, Nick? Do I know why what, what? Why I'm rich and well, not a lot. Okay, not a lot. All right, thanks a lot, mate. I should have, um, I should have listened to my gut instinct. It's, it never, um, it never uh, fails to tell me when when something is about to go wrong. Warning! Warning! That's what I was hearing in my head. I thought I'll just get rid of him straight away, but I didn't because I'm a nice person. <laughs> Ealing. Hello, John. Hi. John. How are you doing? Good, thanks. Do you know, a, a while ago you mentioned that uh, we were, you know, you were trying to work out uh, Boris Johnson's dressing regime and it's like he must fall into a skip and then go through, a, you know, a clothing shop. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm starting to realise that, you know, that you weren't far off because I, I think he spends most of his life in a skip on an abandoned sofa with Kerry checking his temperature. Right. Um, is that the same guy that I had earlier on? Are you the same bloke that I had earlier on? Checking his temperature, eh? How's she doing that, by the way? I think that he covers himself in glue and then runs through the wardrobe. <laughs> That's how he gets dressed in the morning. You know, for speed. Ain't that right, Bodge? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, 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 Certainly wait. is, yeah. All right, thanks a lot, John, for, you know, whatever that was. Edgeware, Simon. Evening, Nick. Actually, they're train operators. That's the actual um, job description, and it is a handle that they push. And on the Victoria and the Central lines, they actually only open and close the doors. Have a look next time you're on the uh, track. <laughs> but I just wanted to make, make, make that little point there, just clear it up. Um, you look at the New York subway. The New York subway have a no-strike rule, and in 2005, when they tried to break it, um, they were told either go back to work or there's no job. I'm not a fan of the way we run our railway system. As Simon Calder, your earlier guest, pointed out, we still subsidise what I can only describe as private bloodsuckers with large uh, shareholder dividends. Now, the East Coast trains, I, I, I go to Yorkshire quite a bit, was a perfect model to go back to public ownership. And then they gave it to Branson and Virgin and they screwed it up in five minutes. Um, I had £60,000, I'd do the job tomorrow. Um, I run security teams, I don't earn that kind of money. Um, zero hour contracts should be made illegal, I agree, because you're moving towards a very dangerous situation. But in this particular instance, the government, um, you're right, I tend to agree, are stimulating this to, for political motives. Between them, the greedy management, and these what very well paid, overpaid uh, train operators, it's people like me, commuters, who are getting squeezed into the middle and having to pay for it all. Yeah, I mean, you say they're overpaid, they're not really, uh, because they are paid what they're paid. I mean, the market decides. The market may decide, but I think that for what they do, um, in my opinion, they are. Um, but you're only comparing what they do to what other people do on less money. I mean, the, the nurses is no. the one that always uh, comes up. No. And uh, I'll no. repeat my position that it's not an argument to reduce the wages of the train operators. It's the, an argument to increase the wages of the nurses. 
that's one point you could play, make. But for, for 60 grand a year to push a handle uh, is a lot of money for what you do. I don't know. I don't agree with you. I think they are overpaid. I'm not comparing them with other, with other um, uh, professions. But I'm saying for 60 grand a year, they've got no reason to go on strike. But I'm, I'm all for a no-strike rule because it's an essential uh, service and it works well on the New York Underground. They, a subway, they introduced it back in 2003. And there's no problems on the New York subway. So I'd like, I would certainly go for an outstrike rule, without question. Luton, John. Hello, yeah, I think you just hit it on the head, mate. She's not Boris Johnson. <laughs> and uh, she's not Richard Sunak. I, I don't, I think, I mean, I would not vote Tory if Richard Sunak became the PM, period, because he's part, he's part of the problem. He's yeah. part of the, he, he was all in it. He was in it. He was keeping Boris going. Well, and they, were, the they were all in it. Yeah. Yeah, so, well, so, not, well, so why specifically not Rishi Sunak then? I mean, he was the man that um, was doling out the cash. He was very popular for quite a while there. Well, he's doling out the cash, but, you know, think, you think about it. I mean, you know, how how close is he to the rich public? Well, don't worry, I've got a wife with 30 billion. That really re really resonates with the public. Looking at, um, I, I mean, Penny, honestly, I think the... If she comes across reasonably sound, um, she'll, she'll walk it. Um, I mean, her background also, it's not like... Talking about, you know, she's asked what's the most exciting thing you've done. Help her be running through poppy fields. She's actually been a magician's helper. She... <laughs> she, she actually, <laughs> Is that a positive thing, being sawn in half on stage? Well, it's more interesting, anyway. But she's she's, she's gone out when she she did she did a at least she did a gap year with Romania in Romania with orphanages and stuff like that. She's she's she went to a comprehensive school, God forbid, a conservative went to a comprehensive. So, I mean, she is that a brain, positive? I mean, it, okay, it, that it sort of speaks of a normal child. Yeah, though. but is that exactly. actually a positive? Because parents put their children at great expense through private school in order to give them a better education. Are we now angling for somebody who's got a, a, a worse education? No, no, I think we're just angling for someone who doesn't look like what's, what, what's gone in the past. If, if we see that, go, there's no break from the past and from party gay and all the rest of it in, in the psyche of the Brits. So not for me anyway. I wouldn't vote for the Tories if, if, uh, if soon that was in there because it, it speaks of the past rather than the future. And fair enough, I think they, Labour should have got an open goal to score in, but if they still don't kill themselves, they should be able to win the next general election. And I would vote for them. But I think I would have a think about Penny Morden. I, w I would actually see the one person I think, OK, let's see where she's going. With what about this. Tom Tugendhat then? I mean, he's very low profile, but he is certainly the, um, the antithesis of um, bumbling Boris Johnson. He's very straight. <clears throat> He's, there's no frills to him. He's got a military bearing. Um, there seems to be an air of discipline about the man. How about him? Well, yeah, actually, he doesn't. Seem, he hasn't got that much momentum. But one thing that impressed me about Penny Morgan also was that she's really, I mean, not I could be thinking about it, but she's really pro um, LGBT people. So, so she wants to want for a Tory leader to say, she? yeah, we want. I thought that yeah, we just heard the opposite of that today. No, no, no. She's coming up. I thought, I thought she was. I thought it was that she was actually pro, and saying she wanted to include. Them. I don't know. I might. I might have misheard that. You know. I, all, I, all I, 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 well, I, I may miss a, I may miss, sorry, I may yeah. have misheard yeah. that too. But I thought that she leapt the board the culture wars there. I, I yeah. I, I honestly don't know. The only thing I've heard on Sky, they just they were saying just on like about half an hour ago, I was watching the news, and he said. They said that Sunak's um, ship is starting to sink. Apparently, they're deserting him. Well, so, he'll be able to afford another one. Don't don't you worry about that. Thanks very much, John. This, I mean, this is an indication of how far removed they are from us. Bodger Johnson wanted to build a treehouse <laughs> fitted with bulletproof glass for his son, who is. Um, uh, apparently at risk of assassination. How bizarre. He wanted to build a tree house for his son at Chequers. Now, Chequers is this vast mansion that is uh, fully cleaned and staffed and, um, and packed to the gunnels with the finest comestibles known to mankind on us. Us poor dopes who pay taxes just so that uh, Bodge and his ilk can enjoy themselves at our expense.
and it's in vast land, vast acres of land. This enormous place, which has got um, hot and cold running armed police persons uh, patrolling it at all times. Why do they need bulletproof glass for his son? Anyway, let's skip that part. We'll come to the money, honey. Now, if you haven't re actually read this story yet, then um, sit down and grip onto something firm because you're not going to like it. Bodger Johnson wanted to build a treehouse for his son at Checkers at a cost of a hundred and fifty thousand pounds a hundred and fifty thousand pounds what yeah until it was um politely described to him that uh people might not like that because actual real houses cost a hundred and fifty thousand pounds in the red wall seats the prime minister reportedly wanted to use money from a donor to build the luxurious playhouse for his son, Wilf. I mean, does this man pay for anything? Seriously, Bodge, it looks like you don't pay for lunch, you don't pay for dinner, you don't pay for your furniture, you don't pay for your wallpaper, you don't pay for your holidays, and you don't pay for your kids. Is there anything you do pay for? I, I can't comment on that. I, 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 Even though number 10 aides warned Johnson that it would cost more than buying a house in some parts of the country, the project was only scrapped when the PM's close protection officers suggested it could be a security risk as the treehouse might be visible from the road. <laughs> And he just batted aside the concerns that it might not look good to spend more on a house for a child as a toy than an actual house for one of his constituents because, uh, you know, he wanted it and what the bodge wants, the bodge gets. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, 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 wait. There were reportedly worries about whether such a large donation would be seen as a conflict of interest. Conflict of interest. Conflict of interest. There, there is no conflict of interest with the dear leader. Everything must be in his interest. Let's have a call in uh, Leicester. Hello, Jason. How are you, man? All right? Good, How thanks. You, yes, very well. Good morning. Uh, so I was just picking up on the comment where, 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 where you said you don't understand. Forgive me if I've got it wrong, where you don't understand why they drink so much on the work. Do. So please do forgive me if I've got it wrong if you said that. Um, uh, well, um, let's assume that I did. What's your comment okay. on that? Uh, no, no, so, like, um, I can drink, I can drink loads on a word, dude. If it's free alcohol, I can drink. And right. that's not saying, <laughs> hey, hey, hold on. Yeah, that's not you saying you can do, there. yeah, but what are the consequences of that? Exactly, and that's what, that's the point. I just wanted to say, I understand why we've drank so much on a word, dude. I didn't, didn't want to, I've not come to justify what he did because mm. he bang out of order. These stories, you know, they get in the way of it for, for a very long time, you know. But I, I just want to clarify why we've drank so much on a, on a, on a, on a, on a, on a, on a wet do because it's yeah. free. Because it's free. <laughs> because it's free. That's as good a reason as any, Jason. In fact, it's probably the best reason. Maidstone. Hello, Joan. Hello there. A couple of points. First of all, regarding the trade strike. Uh, did you hear Grant Shaft say, if I was Prime Minister, I would want them, or words to that effect? You, he would want them? Yep. <laughs> no. Well, I, I didn't hear he what you said. He would take them all. Do something he would take like, them all, right. Yeah, yep, yeah. Right. yeah, sure he would. So, yeah, as regards Penny Morgan, she is a matron in the old boys' schools. This is how she projects herself. Hmm. This is a real nation who used to whack them. <laughs> <laughs> Hence her yeah, popularity. You know about the image, the marine thing, everything about her. Just dress her up as a matron and she's there. There is something of the Margaret Thatcher about her. I no, mean, it she, might no, she be... isn't even as feminine as Margaret Thatcher. She is a matron. Right. I think matrons can be feminine they can be strict but feminine <laughs> well i'm glad you said all that joe <laughs> but thanks for that chelmsford hello robbie hi nick um love your show and thanks. i'm here to declare that penny mordaunt will be our next prime minister no question and what makes you say that 
I, I, I'm somebody who voted Conservative before and was vastly disillusioned over the um, Boris Johnson government. Incredibly so, to the point where I didn't think I could vote Conservative again until the Conservatives rediscovered, you know, a moderate ground Conservatism. But I believe Penny Morden actually embodies that. And while Grant Shapps may claim to be the spreadsheet master and you know, Gavin Williamson is supporting Rishi Sunak. I've done my own spreadsheet and Penny Mordaunt will be our next Prime Minister and I'm very happy to hear that and that, that is the one thing that may make me vote Conservative again. Um, I hope that's your dog. <laughs> it's the next door's dog. My dog's gone to bed. Is it? Right. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, what data did you put into your spreadsheet? That's a very loud next door's dog. Uh, what data did, did you put into your spreadsheet then to lead you to that conclusion? I mean, what is it about Penny Morden that uh, appeals? So, there's two questions there. So, very quickly, in terms of the spreadsheets, it's about basically where the votes go as some of the um, candidates drop out, because they will. You know, Tom Tugendhat and um, Jeremy Hunt are apparently discussing making a deal and endorsement. They will both go towards vastly Penny Morden as the One Nation Conservative. Suella Bradman and Kemi Badnock will go vastly towards Liz Truss. And, and controversial opinion, I actually believe Rishi Sunak is the one who is going to struggle to get the one third plus one number of MPs that is required to hit the... Uh, the final two. So I actually believe it's going to be Liz Truss versus um, Penny Mordaunt, and I believe there's a 55 or 60 percent that's going to support Penny above Liz for various reasons, which we won't have time to go into, but I believe Penny Mordaunt is going to be the next Prime Minister of the UK. Southall, Manesh. Hello, Nick. Yeah, sorry about this. I think the last call you had, Jeff, the expert, mm. he's talking a lot of codswallop or rubbish. I don't know where he's getting his stuff from. Uh, if everyone was restricted to 20 miles an hour, then there'll be more people on the road for a longer time. That's going to cause more pollution. I don't know where he's getting the statistics from. Uh, this guy really needs to rethink his strategy before he goes on public radio and talks a little rubbish. If everyone um, was yeah. restricted to 20 miles an hour, there would be more cars on the People road? on the road. So, imagine you, you've got a journey. If you're doing 40 miles an hour, you're doing 20 miles an hour, mm. you're gonna, it's going to take you twice as long for that journey. Your car is going to be on that road for twice as long, polluting the atmosphere. So, common sense, come on. I, you don't need to be a brain surgeon to figure that one out. Well, you're polluting it's, more. It's, it's, the one doesn't necessarily follow from the other because you might be producing more pollution on that trip by going at 40 than you would have if you had gone at 20. It might take you no, twice as no. long, but you might be no. producing less pollution. No, because he, contra he contradicts himself by saying that if you travel at 56 miles per hour, you can have more economy from your car. Well, so, I, th I think yeah. you're, you're misunderstanding what he was saying. I think he was saying 20 in town and 56 on the motorway, or 50 or 60 <laughs> or whatever it might be. Yeah. Does it make a difference? Look, the, the stats are the same. Your car's going to pollute the same energy whichever way you're looking at it. Does that make sense to you, or am I just stupid? <laughs> Is it possible that it's neither of the above? Uh, I can agree with you. If you can prove me wrong, I'll, I'm happy to accept I'm well, stupid. Well, I, I don't have the... I'm not saying that you're stupid. I'm saying that it's neither of the above. You might not be right, and you might not be stupid. I'm, I don't know. I don't have the figures in front of me about how much pollution a car creates if it's traveling at 20 miles an hour as if it's traveling at 40 it might not be double the amount um it would take you twice as long but you might not produce be producing twice the pollution i suspect that that's probably correct although as i say i don't have the uh, the actual facts in front of me but you most certainly are not stupid manesh don't let anybody tell you otherwise fishy by name fishy by nature Mystery surrounding when Fishy Sunak registered leadership bid website screams the uh, super sore away indie. On Friday, former Chancellor Fishy Sunak announced his bid for leadership just one day after PM Bodge announced his intent to resign. Did, did you actually say the word resign, Bodge? Um. No. Launching the domain ready for Rishi with the number four, not F O R, because putting the number four he, makes him down with the kids. <laughs> 
readyforrishi.com. Sunak, 42, has begun a campaign to be the next Conservative leader. He says, we need to restore trust in our politics. <laughs> we need to rebuild our economy. Why? Because of the last idiot who was the Chancellor, you mean? What was his name again? He says, we need to reunite the country. This is a tagline on Sunak's website. Sunak resigned from his uh, position as Chancellor on Tuesday alongside uh, Health Secretary Sajid Javid, sparking a train of resignations from Johnson's uh, government. It's a train, Budge. <laughs> While uh, Sunak and Javid's resignations were unexpected, some Twitter users are speculating that Sunak planned on running for a leadership position because the domain readyforrishi.com, F-O-R, for, which redirects to readyforrishi.com, the number four, was registered in December 2021. What? Wow. I am stunned. He's been planning this since then. <gasps> and he talks about, uh, we need to um, bring back trust. <laughs> Funny, no? No. <sighs> Mirror reporter Mikey Smith tweeted that a member of Sunak's team clarified that the domain for Sunak's site ready for Rishi number four is uh, the, his Sunak site is the ready for Rishi with the number four in it but did not clarify if they'd also bought ready for Rishi for but if you click on one it directs you to the other Wow well that's you out <laughs> It was uh, it was uh, nice uh, knowing you for the long period which your uh, campaign lasted. Bye bye. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. <laughs> Next, Edinburgh. Hello, John. Hey, hi. Good, good evening. Good morning, Mr. John. Uh, it's, a, it's a really fascinating subject. I live in Edinburgh, where twenty over twenty percent of all. Uh, second to school children go to private schools. Wow. It's three times it's three times the average of the UK, which I think is about seven or eight percent. Right. Uh, now the issue there is, uh, if all of these children, private schools no longer existed, putting them back through the state schools would bankrupt the education system in, uh, in Edinburgh uh, alone. Uh, what your Earlier, guy, the lecturer was very right. The people that are actually sending the children to the, the private schools in Edinburgh or whatever else in the UK are paying twice. The paying taxes anyway, which is going into the state system, mm. and then the paying fees to put them into the private schools. And what you tend to find is the people who are sending the children to private schools will be higher tax, higher tax rate payers anyway. So they're already paying more tax. So I think uh, I don't think it's a good thing. Personally, I have a moral dilemma. I sent my three children to private schools. I didn't. I went to a comp school in, uh, in Glasgow. So there's a moral issue with that. But I think it's quite a complex issue. Uh, and if people have the choice and have to make sacrifices, and it's a bit of an anomaly to think that everyone that's going to private school is going to end up in the cabinet. It doesn't happen that way. Middle classes may take a lot of sacrifices to get their kids there if they want that choice mm. or to exercise that choice. They're all not running into the city and it can actually work against you. One of my, my older son, Charlie, he went to, to St Andrews uh, at uni and it doesn't always actually work for you if you go to a private school because they positively discriminate towards those that go to state schools right. in certain but, universities. But perhaps to um, balance out the, uh, the tendency of those who come from private schools to, uh, um, to over, overachieve compared to those that went to... Uh, state schools maybe chippenham hello jonathan hello good evening jonathan um first i'd just like to commend james in gloucestershire i think i know who that might have been right. um for his comment but i was um giving you going to give you the reason that people have turned against uh the conservative party has turned against um rishi sunak yeah not that i know him personally and your um, your speaker, Mr. James O'Brien, knows exactly why, um, and knew from the beginning. There's a very um, much a truism, I'm sorry to say, amongst uh, lucky persons like myself who were at uh, 
uh, privately educated, that um, we all knew how Boris was going to turn out. And I did particularly because I had the good fortune to go to the same school and university and some of the same characteristics. Hmm. But the one thing they all fear is Rishi Sunak because he looks a very charming chap and he's obviously very clever, but he's bound to be more arrogant than Boris. And he's shown so to be already because he went to Winchester and all Wickhamists consider themselves above the old Etonians. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Right, that's, that's what an and, old boy would say, Jonathan. Ah, uh, I would say it, wouldn't I? But there's a lot of truth in it. Um, I'm not sure that's entirely uh, fair. You can't really paint every student that goes through a school with the same brush. But uh, that's an interesting take. Newcastle, Billy. Yeah, hi, Nick. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Awesome. So I'm studying at Newcastle and uh, I'm building up to my dissertation at the moment. And I've been spending a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with my uh, tutor. And uh, we talk quite a lot of politics and... Uh, uh, he's been telling me what's been going on behind the boardroom. So uh, last year he had 12 members of staff uh, to carry out all the modules and they shared it equally. And now they only have eight. So their workload has increased. And like, I don't know, it's just a bit... So Now is that saving money or uh, is it just because the, well, there's a lot so of teacher positions which are unfilled at the minute? Well, no, it's, it's, that's not at all. So it's like how, uh, like the airlines, they use coronavirus as an excuse. And they said, basically, you can work from home and the demand's a lot less, etc. And they've just put that burden on the rest of the teachers that got left behind, basically. And I'm not sure I'm, I'm not sure I really follow about the, the airlines. Um, uh, it's difficult so for, they, they difficult fired, for they a pilot the staff, to work from they? home. They, well, they they, they, they fired, fired they, all this well, they didn't crisis, fire all their they? staff. They they kept as many as they could, but um, it's a complicated business. The, the airlines you have to keep flying in order to um, keep up your. Uh, I can't remember exactly what it is, but you, it's some sort of uh, qualification that uh, people need. You, you need to put in the hours to be qualified to fly, both as a pilot and as crew. And if the planes are not flying, then um, they would have to get re either let go or retrained. And, and, and because the government kept putting us in and out of lockdown, the airlines didn't know whether they were going to be, uh, the, whether they were going to have a business from one week to the next. It was incredibly difficult for them. And it's really hard to start up a business like an airline from scratch because they, they need to plan a, at least a year ahead, you would think. Um, I'm not sure what it, <laughs> what that has to do with what I'm talking about, though, Billy. Middlewich, Peter. Hi, Nick. I, I would like to say about Penny. I was listening to the, um, you know, her presentation today, and it sounded really good because it sounded like it was going to clear the whole bench of rubbish MPs we've had for a long time uh, um, in, uh, from uh, Boris Johnson. And, uh, you know, to get rid of that lower bench that rules the country, it sounded like she wanted to change things. And that was sort of inspired me to think, well, I think she's probably about right. But there's no reason why, if she becomes prime minister, she could still take Rishi on as a... Uh, as the, the, um, the Chancellor of the Exchequer. Mm, but that's what not, cha that's not changing things. That's the opposite of changing things. Well, and don't, no, and don't you think that all of them have said in their own way how yeah. much they're going to change things and we're going in a new direction and we're not going to continue with that clown show that we've just been suffering for the last two years? But to, but to pretend that she has nothing to do with what's just happened is um, would be disingenuous to say the least because she's been right there with uh, some uh, important uh, official position or other continually since um, about 2010, since the since they came to power in 2010. You see, the thing is, Nick, I, I, I've got no idea of, uh, of the background. All I know is that she's come forefront from nowhere and 
she sounds great. But it's not from nowhere, though, Peter. She's been in there all that time. It's just that she hasn't really um, uh, she has entered the public consciousness. And you have to wonder why. How come nobody knows who she is? It's not like she's just entered office. Basingstoke, Daniel. I have never heard such twaddle from your um, from your last caller. The entire front bench and cabinet of the Tory party has been more diverse, has had more females in it, has had more non-white individuals in it than any other party sat in the House of Commons. So the turn right and to anything to do with this colour is an absolute smokescreen. And the gentleman that was on before, if he wants to come with me to party conference this year, I'll bring him along and I'll show him that the vast majority of the Tory party are not white, middle-aged, privileged people. There is a group that are ancient oil farts that eventually will, but will twiddle off into the sunset and the new youth will come through. But that is absolutely unfounded and unfair to say. The reason people don't like Rishi is he has more money than the Queen of England. He's dictating to us how we should all live and how we should sit there and say there's no tax to pay. He held back on tax cuts, even though the tax takes up. He's held back on, on reducing the amount of tax take that can be taken off fuel, even though the tax take coming in on fuel is substantially up, based on the fact that a litre of fuel a year ago was around 125, and it's now two pounds. So your duty has quadrupled. Therefore, everyone's saying you need to help people out, and he's blocked it. That's why people don't want him. He's a snake number makes number two, and the fact that he has been strategically planning his get rid of Boris campaign since December of last year, bear in mind he bought his website ready for Rishi in December, tells me a little bit more about his character, his evil and manipulative gameplay. The fact him and his wife miraculously decided to change their tax paying purposes only weeks ago, just before he was going to take his final swipe at Boris. And bear in mind the party, uh, the image that was leaked from the party him and Carrie had um, in the gardens came from a window within number 11. Tells you a lot about the individual. That's why people don't like him. And sooner or later, the um, 100, uh, the um, 380 odd MPs need to wake up and say, nobody within the party wants Rishi. He's a slime ball. He's cost the country millions when he took loans out to support the COVID thing. Uh, the COVID funding that went in place. He didn't put protections in, which locked in the interest rate. Bear in mind, he came from a financial background. He should have been educated enough to do that. We're now on a variable interest rate, and it's costing the country billions. The question I'd ask Rishi is, when he resigned from his position to take up the ability so he could stand as a as potential leader of the cabinet, uh, sorry, a leader of the government, did he turn around and forfeit his three months redundancy pay from his role as chancellor? I bet he didn't. He'll have pocketed that money that he didn't need. And the collective total amount of money for all those resignations, nearly half a, bit, uh, half a million pounds. So how many of his crew that all stepped out of the cabinet and all resigned, how many of them are had that? The reason that everyone's looking at Penny Morgan and going, wow, who is this person? She's fresh. She's different. She's not tainted by the mischievous and games that have been playing. That's why people are looking at The reason people are also looking at Liz Truss, Liz Truss got on with the job. She didn't run back when they were all stabbing Boris in the back and having the knives in. They got on with the job and they did what they needed to do for the country. All right. <laughs> and we've run out of time. Thanks a lot, Daniel. Perth. Hello, Mike. Ah, uh, good morning. Uh, yeah, I I was listening to your your guest there. Uh, he alluded to uh, uh, just when you were talking. He was talking about the Scottish. I've got a wee bit of information on the Scottish uh, Scottish students. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah if he, he said there's a problem with funding. I totally agree with him. There, there is a problem with funding in the students uh, in Scotland, in as much as the Scottish government has to keep. I think he alluded to this as well. Actually, the uh, Scottish government has to keep many, many places open for overseas students because that's yes. basically where the fees come from. Right. Okay, right. Right. They also have to keep many places open for, if you like, disadvantaged students. And these are students who, who although they don't uh, actually get the qualifications to get into university, they are, they are allowed a university place. Yeah, and, I think it's about twenty percent, isn't it? Yeah, something like that. But but the problem here is now uh, we have 
extremely, extremely qualified young people, students who've worked hard, and now they're finding they get su- superb qualifications, mm. you know, but, but they can't get a place because the Scottish Government needs to fill the, fill the uh, universities with overseas students, and because they've made this, a uh, 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 if you like, promise, mm. disadvantaged p- pupils get the, uh, 20%. So yeah. we have, extreme, as I say, very qualified young people who actually can't get a place at university in Scotland. Well, they might be able to get a place at university in England or Wales, but then yes. they would have to pay just like the English and the Welsh do. Exactly, exactly. So when, what, yeah, the, but this is the point, Nick. Uh, when the Scottish government, uh, and you must have heard them, uh, if you like, going on about, oh yes, we've got free education in Scotland, mm. you know, and that they're, they're looking for great plaudits for this. Nobody looks into the, the actual detail of it because, uh, well, I've just uh, told you some of it. Yeah, but you'd have I, to say that even taking into account everything that you just mentioned, then there are an enormous number of Scottish students who will go through university and not get this massive amount of debt that everybody who goes from England and Wales gets. Well, I, I, I would tend to disagree with you. It's not an enormous amount because, as I've said to you, they have to keep an enormous amount of places open for overseas students because that's where they've got to get the funding. Yeah, but, I mean, you, you go to a Scottish university and the majority of people there aren't foreign students. Oh, don't you believe it? Don't you believe it? I've just been reading in my local paper the, the, the degrees. And you look, look at the degrees, look at the names, look at the photographs. You know, the, good, the young folk, have they've done well. Well, yeah, um... I don't know what the actual uh, numbers are, so I'm just going to have to say I, I would doubt that the majority of students are from overseas, particularly as we've just been through uh, COVID and people couldn't travel, apart from anything else. Um, but uh, there, it is about 20% that uh, they have to keep for um, those from disadvantaged backgrounds. That is absolutely correct. Uh, but it, you could say that that's no bad thing. Uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. Hello, Ian. Hello there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I, I just I wanted to pick you up on one factor in accuracy, and then talk about Penny Morden. Uh, you said that um, a tax cut benefits the rich more than the poor. If it's just the basic rate tax cut, it doesn't, because that's the whole point about tax bans. Um, you're right. Somebody on twelve grand a year would save about a hundred uh, hundred a month, and somebody on uh, one hundred and twenty would save about a hundred a month. So, as a percentage, so in fact, if you drop the basic rate of tax and put up the additional rate of tax. You could balance it out and make it so that only poor people benefit and rich people pay more and the government makes about the same income. Well, this is not difficult. Um, um, the fact that, the fact, the, the fact that our, our, our um, re- chancellors appear to be unable to figure that out scares me rigid. Um, I'm not sure I, I, I really agree with what you're saying. So if you're saying that if they reduce the, not the higher rate of tax, if they reduce just the lower the fact, rate of tax... The base rate. Right. But yeah, as a proportion, so, so as a, you, 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 hang on, you, hang on a minute. As a proportion of their income, then it might. It's much, si- much larger for poor people. Yes, but it, but a hundred pound isn't really going to do them very much good, though, is it? It's not going to improve their lives any. It will, well, it will well, be as well, nothing. Well, first, well, I disagree with you on that one. But but I mean, apart from anything else, what what the Tories have done is to push up the level at which people start paying tax. So I think it's over fifteen thousand now. So they could actually push that up without dropping the basic rate of tax. And that would benefit poor people proportionately even more. A hundred pound a year, a hundred pound a year is two quid a a week. What can you do with, you can't even buy a pack of butter for two pound. No, I mean, I'm I'm not, I'm I'm not saying it's, I'm not saying it's it's significant, but it's... Well, it's it's insignificant. Um, What I'm suggesting is that if you actually want to help poor people, if you want to help those who are struggling to get by, then you you should take the money and you should direct it to those that need it the most, rather than just throw it around everyone and um, and claim that that's job done. Well, no, what you should do is... is, is, The the problem is that for every pound the government takes in, it spends about half of it on itself. So running running money through governments is very inefficient. Well, what do you by mean by what do you mean by it? paying it, uh, spending it on itself? Well, well, the cost of collecting tax and the cost of redistributing wealth through the government is extremely high. 
it's much more effective to do what to, to undo what the mistake that Gordon Brown made when he when he scrapped the 10p um, lowest tax rate. That was that was horrific for poor people. I couldn't believe a Labour government did that. That was just economic illiteracy. But um, can I talk about Penny Morden for a sec? If you like. Um, uh, you you went I, down I, this road first, not me. But go on. Well, well, I, well, I, well no, I, I, I know. But you're you're a, you're a flexible and lovely chap to talk to, um, and it's so nice to talk to somebody with an English accent. Um, but uh, you know, Penny Morden, I'd, I'd, I'd love to see her as leader, leader of the Conservative Party because I just think the Labour Party wouldn't know what to do with her. I mean, she's female. She's not posh. She didn't go to a public school. Um, her brother's gay, um, and and she says sort of nice-ish things when she thinks she could get away with it about trans people, um, that they would just be so confused. They wouldn't know what to do. Can you, you, you basically got stale male and pale Keir Starmer, sorry, Sir Keir Starmer, QC, um, uh, attempting to have a go across the dispatch box at Penny Mordant, the, 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 um, the, the, the former magician's assistant from Portsmouth. Yes, but uh, the former magician's assistant from Portsmouth would be representing the Conservative Party. The Conservative Party is not made up of poor people who went to a comprehensive school. The 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 equation would be the same. Well, she would be leading the Conservative Party. Uh, whether well, she, whether she, she, would she would be heading the Conservative be. Party. I'm, I'm not sure that she would well, actually be not. taking the Conservative Party in a different direction to that which it is heading in at the moment, being as the Conservative Party uh, relies on its donors for the money that they spend on themselves. And the donors aren't going to change as the leader changes. The donors, the billionaires that prop up the Conservative Party, are still want it, are, will still want it to go in the direction in which it is currently travelling. I think that they, might, they may change the driver of the bus, but the bus is still going to the same destination. I can't believe it. Suella Braverman. <laughs> I mean, it, it could only be better if Gavin Williamson threw his hat in. I, 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 I... Suella Braverman has received a major boost in the race to be Tory leader after leading Brexiteer, hard man Steve Baker, decided not to throw his weight, uh, not to run and throw his weight behind the Attorney General instead. <laughs> hard man Steve Baker, a former government minister, had been seen as an outside bet to replace Bodge hinting as much in interviews that he was considering whether to stand. However, hard man Steve Baker declared tonight that he would not stand for the leadership after all and is instead backing Sweller Braverman, who he said had the iron resolve and authenticity needed to lead the country. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you think that these people are really actually smart. I mean, when you see them on TV, you think, wow, you, to get to where you are, you must have, uh, you know, some smarts around you. You must be, um, you know, well read. You've got to be bright. <laughs> the uh, rules of the leadership election have been agreed on Monday. However, it's likely the candidates would need nominations of more than 10 MPs uh, or more than 10 or 20 MPs to enter the race, says the Telegraph. And then the back end of 10% of the parliamentary party after the first round of voting to stay in. Mr. Baker is now expected to bear, to bring to bear his formidable organising and whipping skills to persuade other Conservatives to back Ms. Braverman. Braverman told the Telegraph, there's no better organiser in Westminster and I'm so glad it's my campaign that has got him. He'll make a vital contribution. <laughs> so, Ella Braverman, Prime Minister. <laughs> Am I hallucinating or is this real life? Hull, Charles. Oh, hi, Nick. Charles. Uh, yeah, you could stay on your show again. Um, we've all been boogieing on down in the park outside our local library because the sun machine came down yeah. and we were going to have a party. A party. We did. Mm hmm. The sun so machine that, is coming down, and we're gonna uh, have a party. Uh, um, what I really wanted to talk about was um, the runners and riders for the uh, the leadership of the election, the not election, the Conservative Party. Yeah. 
And, well, I'm afraid the sad man, intellectually, he gets 10 out of 10, but all <laughs> men just 10 out of don't 10. Deal. <laughs> That doesn't seem a likely score for Super Sag. Ten out of ten know, for brains. And, and then we've got fishy You, you mean to tell me that he's unimprovable? Ten out of ten? We could just talk over each other for the next three hours if you like. This is a no, listener with material. Oh. Yeah, yeah, okay, all right. Thanks a lot, Charles. No listeners with material. You can tell me what you think, but don't read off a script. That's my job. I'm tired of the ocean. Let the dude